What's up, sweaties? You're watching Tuesday's Collider Heroes. It's episode 152. I'm John Schnapp. We are going to get into some crazy news. You know who's joining me today? It's Robert Meyer Burnett. Well, hello. It's good to be back on a weekday. That's right. <laughs> you know, weekdays are awesome. Amy Dallin's here as well. Tuesdays, they're pretty good. Hello. I get the most adorable backdrop today, and I'm kind of excited about it. That's right. We are ecstatic about this, uh, <laughs> tasty, I see what you did there. this tasty news uh, coming from Fox is some more flavor from the Fantastic Four and Dr. Doom, possibly. Let's just get into it right away. So Mark, <laughs> Malo Mark Miller, I finally get saying his name right. I've been corrected by a lot of people. They're like, it's Miller. Get it right. So Mark Miller, spelled differently, but sounds like Miller, um, says other script, his other script, Kindergarten Heroes, is being adapted replaced, rewritten, and is gonna now have Valeria Franklin and Ben Grimm and Johnny Storm in it, and it's gonna be the Fantastic Four, the new version now, of the Fantastic Four. This, this is stage, rumor, right? okay. we are hearing this from multiple sources. It has not been actually confirmed or locked down by Fox. Neither has the Noah Hawley Doctor Doom standalone movie. Is he gonna be searching for his mom in hell? Is he gonna be hanging out in college with Reed Richards? Is he already gonna be wearing the armor and he's all pissed off and runs Latveria? Probably none of those things. We don't know what any of this is, but I trust Noah Hawley. The guy's incredible. He did an amazing job on Legion. He also, isn't he the same guy who runs Black Mirror? Noah no, 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 he no, does that's Booker. Fargo. That's Charlie Booker. Charlie I'm sorry. Booker. Noah Hawley, sorry, I'm getting these geniuses confused. Wow. Noah Hawley is Fargo, season one, season two, season three, all incredible. You don't even have to have seen the original Fargo. You should have. No, you should. You should see it. But if you didn't, you can still watch these series and enjoy them. Legion is incredible. So, hey, look, I'm not mad at Doctor Doom. I actually am mad at Doctor Doom. If they do a standalone <laughs> Doctor Doom without the Fantastic Four, I'll be irritated. But at least they got an incredibly talented person to run that ship. Uh, we don't know who's running the Fantastic Four kids, the Fantastic Babies, whatever, the children of the Fantastic Four. We don't know what this is going to be. Um, it sounds like a train wreck to me, but uh, who, who do, what do I know? Just a fan of the comic books. Anyway, let's get into it. What are your thoughts about the kindergarten Fantastic Four, Amy Dallin? I, I love it because, like, I was like, I'm a little bit like, maybe, m maybe uh, this process, this taking an unrelated movie, like, filing the details off and then turning it into Fantastic Four. That sounds like a nightmare, but like I have learned over time that like I will often be surprised by the ways that like there's probably movies I love that came out of a process that weird. Uh, it, it doesn't sound like the right way to approach adapting existing material, uh, right. but but it seems as if they've they found the bones of something that has kids and superheroes and they're like reskinning it to be Fantastic Four. And the truth is, would I sign up? For Franklin and Valeria and their babysitting Fantastic Four parents? Yes. All right, so Robert, let me throw it to you this way. So does this Muppet Babies version <laughs> wash the horrible taste of the Cronenberg-y style Fantastic Four from two years ago? Does it does it refresh you because they don't understand that the Fantastic Four wasn't a, like a baby child adventure land thing when it was being written in the 60s? They just don't get it. They don't understand the power of Stanley and Jack Kirby. They're going to keep Kirby's. mucking it up, at least muck it up in a new way. I get what you're saying, but what do you feel about this? I, I think it's horrifically <laughs> awful, frankly. I mean, what, what I don't get, what I don't understand is why not go back to the source material? Go back and look at, first of all, the original incarnation of Fantastic Four. Then go back and look at Burns' 80s incarnation. Right. I mean, a family on a cosmic odyssey. Mm -hmm. into, in, we're a day after Kirby's 100th birthday. Why don't they just delve into what already exists, what the MCU does so well, right. take their previously existing subject matter, and adapt that? A family, whether it's Swiss Family Robinson, whether it's Lost in Space, combined with, I mean, if you look at the tone of Guardians of the Galaxy, and you look at the Incredibles, and mm -hmm. even what we might be getting with Thor Ragnarok, it's all there. Yep. And they keep trying to reinvent, let's make this that. I mean, Fox, for the Die Hard franchise, they adapted for Die Hard 2, they adapted a script called 58 Minutes, and then for Die Hard with a Vengeance, they adapted a script called Simon Says. So Fox does have a long history of taking other scripts and retrofitting them for their franchise properties. But I don't understand, it's all there in the comic. Here's an idea. Just go look. That's yeah. the truth. Like, Fantastic Four is some of the greatest humanist science fiction ever written, and they nailed it out the gate and have had countless reinterpretations right. since then. It doesn't seem like, like, and we currently, in movies right now, we've had a beautiful crop of, like, optimistic, thoughtful science fiction movies with cool heroes. They just haven't been, like, 
the the the, the superhero ones. Right. They've been over in like actual sci-fi land. Like just borrow some of that. People are clearly down for it. Well, here, here's what I was gonna say. It's an idea. Is you could reskin this Fantastic Four me movie with perhaps a comic book written about the Fantastic Four. <laughs> Uh, you could use any one of the first 60 issues of Fantastic Four and use that as like, they have these three issue story arcs that are just really incredible if you ever read them. Um, but perhaps like you might want to go with some modern age stuff, Hickman, look that guy up. It's, you know- Mark his, Wade and Mike Ringo, yeah. Jonathan Hickman, yes. the burn run you're talking about, like there's not a lack of great Fantastic yeah, Four John Burns at. incredible, fantastic, like three and a half, I think four year run on the Fantastic Four all of his issues are really fun. They're an updated version of Stanley Jack Kirby's original stories, but they were done in the 80s. So it's like, there's no, la there's no lack of amazing Fantastic Four stories. Or go look at something like, this might seem a little crazy. Look at a movie like The Mosquito Coast, uh -huh. where Harrison Ford plays kind of a crazy father who takes his family off into the jungles of where, South America or something, or Central right. America. Well, instead of Central America, they go off onto a cosmic odyssey. The instead. negative zone. The negative zone wherever. Right. I mean, there there is there is a, a hundred years of cinema history that deals with families going off on odysseys. Together. I want to see Reed Richards played by Harrison Ford now. Imagine if they made an <laughs> aged R Reed Richards and Sue Storm and made that the kind of the starting of the adventure where everyone else was a little bit younger. The problem is they always, with these movies, the first impulse is they have to have a villain. Right. The same thing has happened to Star Trek. Star Trek was never a franchise about villains. It was about antagonists. But in this, because it's a superhero movie, we have to have Doctor Doom. Mm -hmm. Why? The Fantastic Four didn't always have to have Doctor Doom. Well, I don't know if we have to have Doctor Doom. Let's go to this next graphic. Noah Hawley is making his own standalone Doctor Doom movie. That's probably why the fa Doctor Doom probably won't be in this fantastic children adventure that's going to happen with kids playing with blocks and you know little kindergarten stuff. Who knows what's <laughs> going to happen, but Doctor Doom's in his own standalone movie done by the Legion guy. I like the idea of this because we already talked about he's a great showrunner. He's done Fargo. He's done Legion. He's proven his, his weight in the television world doing a standalone two-hour movie. We could eat that for breakfast. What are your thoughts about Noah Hawley? Um, well, obviously we trust him. If this does turn out to be a Doctor Doom movie, we have to eat our words a little bit because we all didn't believe. We were like, right. clearly he just means Fantastic Four. Right. Uh, and if it turns out that he literally meant Doctor Doom origin story, cool. This is, uh, we were talking about how Joker doesn't necessarily like that. I like Joker less if he has a specific origin. Right. Doctor Doom does have a specific origin and it's one that I love. Right. So it seems like, I think, it's weird to have a Doctor Doom movie by himself that's not him as a good guy. I'm going to contradict myself um, because those stories that I love mostly involve Reed Richards showing yes. up eventually, which means it is a Fantastic Four movie. Uh, but, like, there's a lot of juicy backstory there. So I, I can't rule out that especially Noah Hawley is going to find an interesting angle on this. What if Noah Hawley does this spin on Doctor Doom where it's only from Doctor Doom's perspective because every villain thinks they are the hero? So what if he like is actually seeing Reed Richards and only from his perspective is he's trying to destroy my work. He was writing notes in my, you know, like you only see Reed Richards from Dr. Doom's heart perspective. If you just watch him like descend further into paranoia mm. as like the sort of the in a thing that was quite well done in the film Chronicle is like watching a supervillain yes. become uh, by shades where you're like, you kind of always had it in you, but I keep watching you make the wrong choice. Right. Um, but that applied to sort of an adult story uh, on this scale would that would be real sad, guys. Robert? Well, one of the great tragedies of all time, film tragedies, stories of all time, is The Godfather 1 and 2, mm -hmm. where you see a good man in Michael Corleone who, because he has to do the right thing and protect his family, he gets sucked into the family business, which is organized crime, and he ends up losing his soul. Right. I mean, he, he's, he's, uh, he's an incredible villain. He realizes he's an amazing supervillain to the point where he even, spoiler, <laughs> kills his own brother right and when he does that he loses his very soul and that's how you make a doctor doom film. i, I thought you were gonna say god the the worst thing about the godfather thing was godfather 3 but you're no actually... but i'm a huge godfather <laughs> 3 fan i mean right? there's things about it that aren't great that were production mandates like robert duvall's not in it when the movie should have been about robert duvall and michael corleone battling for the family it's not but it's still pretty good These but no but that's of a that's universe. what you do you do the story or a movie like a face in the crowd right one what of a the great, great movie political movies of all time about a man who grows up and becomes a this incredible politician, but he's empty inside. Just check out A Face in the Crowd of University. It's the best Andy Griffith film but I've ever seen. This is how a Doctor Doom movie could be compelling. You know, the fall of Anakin Skywalker, which was right. not ha handled very well, right. that could be a great Doctor oh, Doom movie handled well. It's right. Citizen Kane. 
Yeah, Citizen Kane. It's Citizen is. Latveria. Yeah, and it's Citizen just Latveria. Him, I'd like, lo- I would watch the heck out of that movie. Idealistic yeah. young, but like, Citizen again, you Doom. Need, you right? need Reed for that. Yes. You need you, the friend he you, could have had that he drove away. You need Joseph Cotton for that. But honestly, I mean, all the people who were in like Citizen Kane's life, you know, it's like like when you think about that, they were like all kind of there helping him along, or like you know, they're not innocent. So all these kids are like, I'm never watching those movies. Right. It's they're black all and like white. half our audience is like. I'm so out. we don't know if this could Aww. work. If we, we don't know if this could work or not, but like I'm gonna weigh in. I think the Doctor Doom standalone could work, even though I'm against it, only because of the creative talent of Noah Hawley. The Kindergarten Kids, Fantastic Four, Reboot, Rejects, whatever the hell you're going to call it. I'm staying the hell away from it. If you're going to do it, just make a power pack. I was going to say, make a, I love that book when it right? first came out. I'm like, it was not something I should have liked. Loved it. Yeah, power, Wasn't that Anne Nascenti? Uh, I think so. Uh, and and uh, uh, Louise Simonson. Louise Simonson. Louise Simonson, Simonson. Yeah, that's yeah. what it was, Louise um, Simonson. Yeah, Wheezy. Look, check it out. Let's get into Minor Mutations. That's right. We haven't done this in a while. Minor Mutations is back. I know everyone's cheering and happy that you probably don't even know what it is. <laughs> Insert Check cheers. it out. Yeah, l- number one on Minor Mutations this week, we've got Grant Morrison's Happy. It's going to premiere in November on Sci Fi. If you haven't, if you don't know what Happy is, check out the graphic novel. I don't even want to ruin it, but that little creature's in there. If you, if you haven't read it, uh, I don't want to ruin it. So, but it's uh, written by Grant Morrison, one of the most amazing writers currently alive right now, writing comics. So, uh, hopefully, this uh, TV version is fun. It's going to be on Sci Fi. Number two, We've got Shazam. It's starting shooting in May. David F. Sandberg recently went online and said, like, he's going to cast two different actors of, as Billy Batson and Shazam, and he's not going to use that computer graphic de aging technique. He's like, why bother? We could just have two different actors. It's silly. Or, you know, try, trying to match an older person's head onto a younger person. So it's going to be two different actors. Number three, we've got Justice League Dark gets John Spates, who wrote Doctor Strange. He's going to be writing the screenplay or rewriting the new version of Justice League Dark. Happy to hear that John Spates is a big sweaty. Number four, we've got Runaways Pilot. It's getting great critical response. The pilot, everyone's saying, is really fun. It's really amazing. It's going to series. Happy to hear that. Number five, we've got James Cameron. He's got a call on Wonder Woman. He wrote a long thing saying Wonder Woman is a step backward, followed up by number six, baby. You know what that's going to depixelize into? Patty Jenkins and the entire world respond to James Cameron's comments. Uh, there is no right or wrong kind of powerful woman. So those are my mutations of this last week. What are your guys' thoughts? Amy, what pops off to you? Uh, a lot of that stuff. I'm excited about two different actors for Shazam makes sense. Right. Like totally. it's you know that's what actors are for. <laughs> you get them to to portray different people at different ages. Uh, I so I'm excited for that. I'm excited we have a writer for Justice League Dark. I obviously James Cameron is entitled to his opinion right. and has made a lot of great movies. Uh, and I agree with everyone in the world who disagrees with him. Uh, it we have to fight a battle on all fronts moving forward. And much as I want room for female heroes who look a huge variety of different ways, uh, who are attractive, who aren't attractive, who don't need to be attractive. Uh, like there's room for all of that and we kind of need all of it. So that's my, my, my two cents because I guess it's mandatory that we all have an opinion on James Cameron's opinion. Right. Uh, well, you know, I'll say my opinion about James Cameron's opinion is, look, he has his right to his opinion. Uh, some people are right and some people are wrong with their own opinions. It's all subjective and you can make up your own decisions and reasons as to why some of the things he said were right and a lot of the things that he said were wrong or just kind of misunderstanding things. If you look at the way he portrays and writes women in his movies, you can kind of see where his perspective is. But I really have to agree with everything that most everyone else has said about what he said because of basic misunderstanding of, of characters not just women, but of how you write characters. It doesn't matter what they look like, it's who they are and what they stand for. And just because Wonder Woman is beautiful has nothing really to do with the power of what Wonder Woman is in the film. So it is kind of a misunderstanding, a basic wrong approach as to the way uh, he's looking. It's not a step backwards, it's a step forward. So Robert, what are your thoughts? Well, I thought it was funny, first of all, that I saw this meme online that that James Cameron could only write strong female characters as long as Michael Bean slapped a gun into their hands first which he did with Sarah Connor and with Ripley in right. Aliens. Right. But no, I, I think, first of all, are you going to tell me that a little girl who walked up to Gal Gadot at Comic-Con with tears in her eyes has not been inspired by seeing Wonder Woman? Mm-hmm. I mean, who? that's so weird. It just doesn't make any sense to me that somebody would, why diss on that movie? That so many people, there's no reason there's, to. I mean, there's tons of room for valid critique and to want everything to be as good as it can be. But I like I think calling it a step backwards is sort of, 
crazy. No, and given especially the facts. It's, it's honoring a character that's seventy five years old. Right. And and there was there was no reason to say that. But anyway, uh, I can't wait to see Happy. Honestly, yeah, Happy. I'm really excited about, and also the casting of uh, two different actors for Shazam. I think is great. Sandberg definitely saying. Look, why would we even mess with that when it's just, you know, we're, we're adding all this post-production, which is not necessary. If you just look at just even the TV series from the 70s, when they were like, Billy Batson and this guy was driving around in a weird mentor, band. His mentor, whatever. What was his name? I can't even remember. I think but, mentor. Oh, <laughs> my, like, my that's friend, what they called it. Was, did right? they just say, yes, a mentor. What should I do? I can't remember. That is crazy if his name was just it's mentor. Winnebago driving the yeah, highways. Right. And then they cut to the animated Pantheon of Gods. Right? They were the animated characters, you know, and then the weird... The Quatloos from from the uh, Star Trek episode make, games. Yeah, I want to see the ISIS, uh, the you know Shazam and ISIS Power Hour. Look it up on YouTube. We'll see if that ever happens. Um, look, James Cameron is entitled to his opinion. I'm not going to get too much more into it, but if you you know just because Wonder Woman is beautiful, it is not like it's so archetypal. Like it's so it's it, the There's way a he valiant, a valuable argument to be had about sexualizing female heroes yes. or like sure. a need for all of them to be glamorous all the time. And when I saw some of the initial art for this design for these designs of Wonder Woman, I wasn't sure like she's still wearing heels, she's still this, but the way the movie was shot mm -hmm. was so rewarding and the way the mo character was written and the way it was presented in so many ways was so satisfying. I just don't understand how you do that math and you come out with a step backwards. Well, you know, there's a there's a great horror, well, you used to be great. There's a great horror filmmaker named Dario Argento mm. who made Suspiria, a lot of mm -hmm. Gallo movies, mm -hmm. and he once said he w was criticized for being misogynistic because many women die in his movies. Mm -hmm. And he was like, why do you always have to kill beautiful women in your films? And he goes, well, I like beautiful women. I mean, if they're going to be in my movies, I mean, <laughs> what's, what's wrong with that? That's an interesting... And, and I, I kind of said, I kind of thought it was funny. I mean, Wonder Woman is a character that already has a previously established look and a previously established <laughs> mythology and stuff. So you're not going to cast somebody who looks like we wouldn't we accept all know that there was a lot of range for casting different body types we're right. all happy yeah with but everybody complained that gal gadot like was too thin and not busty enough when she was first cast and, and then it's like really uh, are you kidding me a woman that was actually in the military she right. got she the people complained about her casting at first well because she, the, the stereotype of wonder woman was like burned into our minds pretty much everyone just looks at wonder woman who didn't read comics and thinks of linda carter so right. I think that's why that that whole fight against the casting, as well as a lot of people are just saying she's not an actress. I that's a separate fight as well. There are some. Yeah. There are certainly Absolutely. folks out there being like she didn't like who complained about boob size and I don't care about you. Uh, just for the record, uh, there are other folks who were sort of like that initially saw her and had doubts about sort of the athletic build of a powerful right. fighter. And I feel like, I hope that those doubts were pretty answered by the movie and the presentation and her training and a lot of that stuff. But like that one, I'm like, okay, that's an agree to disagree scenario. But do you know why she worked in that role so well? Because she's charming. Yeah. yeah. It's because she's an all around developed, there's a, a, a glean in her eye. There's, she has a winsome smile mm -hmm. and, and she can be in man's world and, and be incredulous and she's smart and she brings a lot of wide-eyed wonder to the to the role. Well, I always and there's that. an indelible quality to her that transcends her, her physicality or her costume and her, there's something about her humanity that's made her work and, and, and that's what's important, Yes, I think. I, I was gonna add on, I think that the acting and reacting is the most key important part of any actor. And if you could see that in their face, it's always through their eyes. She was the right performer. Yeah. Yes. Uh, she also happens yes. to look fabulous. But yeah. like, that was... So I was not disappointed in her acting. I was definitely not disappointed in the screenplay. And I was not disappointed in Patty Jenkins' direction. I feel it was everything was an A on that game. So... Uh, that's it for us on Heroes. You've been watching episode 152 on Tuesday. Robert, where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at BurnettRM. Find me on Instagram at RMBurnett or on Facebook at Robert Meyer Burnett. And please, even though I've seen it 100 times this week, whenever you say you're not a Russian hotbot, I chuckle. <laughs> I'm chuckling right now. Amy, where can people find you online? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at EnthusiAmy uh, and you know, maybe do or don't come at me with your Wonder Woman takes. Uh, I don't know. You know what? We've all got takes on all these subjects. <laughs> come at all of us, but just keep it clean and be professional and be smart about it. Um, you know what? We're going to be at uh, 
Ar Arc Light later tonight. Uh, some of us will be there looking at uh, a film called Jurassic Park. That's right. Uh, and then afterwards, you can hang out with all of us and talk m mad, crazy shit about that Tyrannosaurus Rex and whether or not Perry Nemiroff actually got eaten by it from that graphic, because we're all going to be hanging out after the movie in the upstairs lobby. A whole bunch of people. I don't know who's going to be there. I'm going to be there. So for a minute, I'll see you guys there. Uh, see you tomorrow as well, Wednesday. Bye. Hey guys, if you like this video, <laughs> click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.